Hello again. It is what day is it? Tuesday the oh, April the 3rd. And I am up in Hartsdale, New York, where I am shooting an independent film called The Surrogate. Uh, sitting in this house that looks like somebody's Airbnb, but I guess people really live here. And uh I guess I'm thinking about being a mom. I'm playing a mom in this, a mom of uh, a young woman who decides she wants to be a surrogate for uh, two of her friends who are who are gay and uh, the, the, the testing, the prenatal testing, you know, shows that the baby's going to have some problems and she's got to make a decision. I'm grateful that I have not ever had to have that decision uh, for myself or even with my children. My children do not have children. I'm so, so serious today. I don't know why. I guess because it's cold up in this house. They don't have the heat on. It must be white people because white people like shit to be cold. Um, but what I've been thinking about is I have four adult children. They're aged. I get the ages wrong because I sometimes think of their ages by what they're going to be by the end of the year. I think they are 28, 31, 22, and 19. I know that my son will be 20 this year, so maybe that means my daughter will be 23. But anyways, my son is going to school abroad, abroad, across the big pond. He is going to school in Berlin, and I love to travel, and I think there is no better education in the world than traveling. But I travel on a shoestring. I get a backpack. I have... All my, you know, enough clothes that I can fit in a backpack for a month or six weeks. And I take trains and buses all over the world by myself. But my son, my 19-year-old son, he is living his best life on my dime. He and his friends flew to the Canary Islands from Germany. And then he don't call me. He don't write me. He don't say, Mama, thank you so much. I find out about what he is doing on Instagram. So I go on his Instagram feed and I see him dancing in the clubs. At one point he was chilling in the villa. That's what he posted. And then another one, I see a whole table with like a half a dozen people sitting there with big goblets of wine. So he is living his best life on my dime. And he asked me the other day, he's like, you know, school's going to be over soon and the weather won't even be good. Will I be able to stay? I mean, is there any way I could stay longer? I'm like, sure, get a job. That's how you stay longer. You get a job. I don't know. I guess I had it so hard. I have tried not to have my children go through it as hard as I went through it because it was painful. I have had some, ooh, some rough lessons in the school of hard knocks, the school of life. And I did not want my children to go through that. But in depriving them of that pain and suffering, I feel like I have crippled them. And there's just some stuff that they're like squeamish about where I, I never had the privilege to be squeamish. I had to do it. If it was going to get done, I had to do it. I didn't have anybody to ask for help. I didn't have nobody to borrow from. I had nothing. So I'm kind of ambivalent. It's like, on the one hand, I'm grateful that I'm available and I can help my children. On the other hand, I feel a little resentful that they even come to me and ask because I didn't have anybody to ask. So that's what it's like to be a parent. You know, you have this ambivalence. You want to help. You also realize you didn't have help. But, you know, it's what I wrestle with. And, yeah, yeah, being a mom is no joke. No joke at all. 